Sheffield, come on, stand to your feet with us. You at home, we encourage you to join us in worship. How many of you are here this morning to experience the glory of the Lord? For no other reason, how many of you are here this morning to experience the glory of the Lord? We encourage you to invite him in this morning, invite him in at home. We're asking you, Lord, to show us your glory. God, for no other reason, Lord, that we're here but to experience the glory of the Lord. Come on and worship with us this morning. Press in this morning and ask God for whatever it is you need, whatever it is you're standing for as his glory passes by. Be ready to receive this morning. Jesus. 
with your voice sing of the goodness of God come on open up your mouth thank you father for your goodness thank you for your goodness the goodness of God has manifested himself before you this morning and at your home and where the goodness of God is there's so much there's so many things and I declare and I confess this morning that because of his goodness is here that there is healing in this house there's healing where you're at as you're listening this morning that there is healing for your mind your emotions and your body and whatever it is is ailing you God has provided healing and some of you may say that I've been standing and I've been believing for a long time but the word of the Lord lets us know that we're to continue to ask we're continue to seek we're continuing, to, we should continue to knock. And so, Father, this morning, so many of us are standing here and we're waving and we're knocking and we're seeking and believing you for healing for our bodies, for our minds, our emotions, whatever it is that is ailing. So, Father, we beseech you this morning and we ask for your healing virtues, your healing power to manifest itself this morning in this room in the lives of those that are listening over mine, Lord. We need you this morning. We're here, we're waiting on you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Healing is here. Healing is here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Healing is here. And I receive it. Healing is here. Healing is here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Healing is here. And I believe it. So I reach my head to the heavens and I lift my eyes where my 
Because fear will cause you to disbelieve. Say, you are the God of our power. And it is your will that my life is here. Come on, declare with us this morning. Say, sickness can't stay in. Come on, from your mouth to his ear. Say, your perfect love. perfect love is casting Come on now, declare. Say that you're the God of all power. You are the God of our power. Come on, and it's His will. It's His and will. It is your will that my life is here. Come on, say sickness can't stay. Sickness can't stay any longer. Your perfect love is casting out fear. Your perfect love is casting out fear. Come on, say, because you're the God of all power. You are the
lift your hands this morning. Declare it. You are the God. You are the God. Receive the freedom God has for you today. Yes, your perfect love, God. Your perfect love cast out all fear today. You are the God. You are the God of all power this morning. It is your will today, God. It is your will today, God. It is your will, it is your will that we be healed today, God. It is your will that we be healed today, almighty God. Your perfect love cast out all fear today, Jesus. You are the God of all power, yes you are. You are the God of all power, yes you are, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You are the God of all power, yes you are, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Truly, as we have been in this time of worship, we declare that your goodness is chasing after us today, God. Then we allow our minds to reflect on God's healing power today and knowing that his perfect love cast out all fear today. I was reminded in the scripture this morning that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That's just his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous can run in and find safety. Now this is just just his name. His name is a strong tower. When we call on the name of Jesus, the scripture tells us the demons flee. Because in the name of Jesus, there's power. You are the God of all power. And it is your perfect will that I be healed this morning. That in the name of Jesus, sickness, disease, infirmity, we're also reminded that Isaiah tells us in 53, chapter 53, verse 5, for he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes... We are healed. You might have walked through the doors of the sanctuary this morning, feeling pain, feeling discomfort, carrying sickness and disease. But in the name of Jesus, we declare his healing touch over you today. You're watching by stream. We declare the name of Jesus over you. By his stripes, you be made whole today. I know that there are prayer requests that we need to ask the Lord to come and minister to these needs today. We need to pray for the family of Brother Albert Dacos. Pray for Sister Dacos and her children today. Brother Albert went home to be with the Lord, and there's a very dear sister that's attended Sheffield for years Sister Gloria Chris went home to be with the Lord a couple weeks ago we need to remember her family in prayer today 
Continue to pray for Sister Gloria Meacham today. You've got a need this morning. I want to believe God with you and for you today. Your church family is praying for you today. You're watching by stream and maybe you've not been able to make it to the house of the Lord for a while. We want to believe God with you today. Remember his perfect love cast out all fear. Whatever your situation is, spiritually, emotionally, physically, we believe that God is able to bring healing and restoration to you today. Over your emotions today. In Jesus' name. If you've got a need this morning, I want to encourage you to raise your hand today. Brother Roger, God sees your need today. We're going to believe God for you today. God's able to make a way where there seems to be no way today. He is the God of all power and all might today. Can we go before the Lord in prayer today and ask him to bring healing and restoration today? Father, we come before you today on behalf of your people, your children today. You see the hands that are raised in the sanctuary today, God. You see those hands that are raised by stream today. Father, in the homes, in the cars, in the office place today. Here in the sanctuary today, God, we ask that you would manifest your healing touch today. The name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous can run in and find safety, find strength, find health today. Father, we pray today in Jesus' name, your healing virtue be released today. Father, renew the strength of your people. Father, where they're walking in weariness today, may they find strength today. May they find hope today. May they find your healing touch today. Yes, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet today. God, we believe that you, Father, bind up the wounds of your people. You are the paraclete that sticks closer to us than a brother today. You are the great physician, Jehovah Rapha, Je the God who's able to make whole, who's able to heal, restore today in Jesus' name. Father, we pray against this blood clots today. Father, we pray against diabetes today, glycoma today. Father, I pray that you would cure the cancer today. Father, I pray that you would touch those who are sick in body today. Father, we believe that you are the God of all power and might today. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory today. Father, minister to those who've lost loved ones. Brother Albert DeCosta's family today. Sister Gloria Chris today. Her family, Gloria Meacham today. Touch her body today. Father, we will be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And in Jesus' name, make a way for our brother Roger today where there seems to be no way. And we will be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, let the church shout amen today. Come on and give him praise today. Safety this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Glory to your name, Almighty God. Glory to your name, Almighty God. We give you praise this morning, Jesus. We give you praise this morning, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, God. 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 Your goodness is running after us this morning, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness, God. This morning, we're just so grateful that you've chosen to come out on this stormy Sunday morning. But I'm reminded that he's your peace in the midst of the storm this morning. He is your peace this morning. Amen. We want to thank you for coming out and worshiping with us this Sunday morning. It might be your first time ever attending Sheffield Family Life Center. We want to welcome you after the service. If you'll be so kind as to make your way into our Connection Center, we would like to greet you in the name of the Lord. For those of you who are in the sanctuary and even those of you at home, just want to encourage you to wave at someone. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let the Lord use you if you feel like you've got a word for the body. Jesus. God, even in this moment, we thank you for who you are to us. We thank you, God, that you hear the cry of your people this morning. It's in the hearts of your people. We surrender it all to you this morning, God. Knowing that you've come to visit us this morning. Knowing that you know each one of us by name. The very hair on our head is numbered this morning, God. We, in this moment, Father, we reverence your presence. We reverence who you are today, that you are the God of all power and might, that you are our healer today, that you are our strength today, that even in our weakness, God, you make us strong today, that you surround us with an everlasting love, that you comfort us when we walk through the very darkest, deepest valleys today. Even when our minds wander off, God, we know that you hear our cry today. Hear the cry of your people this morning, Jesus. Hear the cry of the depths of their cry this morning. Hear the very depths of their cry this morning, Jesus. Hear our cry, Lord. Hear our cry. Hear our cry, Lord. Hear our cry. Hear our plea, Lord. Hear our plea. Hear our plea, Lord, hear our plea, and 
Hear our cry, Lord. Hear our cry. Hear our cry, Lord. Hear our cry. God, we seek an answer from you this morning. Knowing that it is you, God who answers the cry of his people, answers the prayer of his people. Father, we honor you this morning. We thank you for your goodness, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. The goodness, your goodness, Jesus. Your goodness, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Yes, Jesus. This morning, we want to reverence the presence of the Lord. Know that we want to surrender our will to His will this morning. Just want to encourage you to stay in in an attitude of worship this morning. And I believe God has something for us today. We want to be mindful of His presence, reverence His presence. Ask him to have his way in this place. As he so often does. So grateful for this house this morning. That we can reverence, we can calm and be still in his presence and hear his voice. And let him do what he wants to do. This morning we just want to encourage you as you continue in your time of worship today. Go to 816-266-4848. You can go to sflc.net, hit on the giving prompt. Maybe you've picked up an envelope as you made your way into the sanctuary today. After the service, if you'll be so kind as to drop those off into the receptacles in the center of the sanctuary this morning. If you'll be so kind as to turn your attention to our screens, we do have some announcements for you today. Good morning, Sheffield family. It's another beautiful Sunday, and we are happy that you have joined us in person and online. As always, there's a lot going on that I'm going to let you know about, so here's your announcements. Family, we need youth camp leaders. You make it possible for your children to go to camp. So we're asking you that if you're interested, to please contact me at the church office to receive some more information. Teenagers, that's anyone who is 55 plus. We have some exciting news. We have a monthly produce box that's available every third Thursday. If you'd like to sign up, please contact me, Lauren Hill, at the church office. Due to scheduling, we have an update for our men's ministry kickoff. It will now be June 11th in our youth parking lot across the street. It will be held from 11 to 1.30. They're going to have hamburgers, hot dogs, chips, water, and so much more. It's a good time of fellowship, and for you guys, men, it's a time to come together and just reconnect. So if you'd like more information, please contact Ms. Pat Washington at our church office. If you are 60 plus, we have a monthly box just for you. It is filled with shelf-stable items, and it's every fourth Tuesday of the month. If you'd like to see if you qualify for this box, please contact me, Lauren Hill, at the church office. Parents, our kids' camp is fast approaching. The theme this year is Level Up, and it will be July 11th through the 15th. 
We are so excited to be able to take our kids to camp this year. So if you would like more information or would like to register your child, please stop by and see Pastor Gilbert or Pastor Maritza right after service. Ladies, Linda Randall's A Woman After God's Own Heart Conference is gonna be in this house October 28th and 29th. Tickets went on sale just last Sunday and they're already moving fast. If you'd like to secure your spot, go to lindarandall.com, click on that Woman After God's Own Heart tab and you can purchase your tickets there. If you'd like some more information, please contact Pastor Nicole Hill at our church office. Our youth camp is June 1st through the 4th, and our deadlines are fast approaching. So if you are registered to go to youth camp, please remember that your payment is due by the 18th. If you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me, Lauren Hill, at the church office, and we'll get it squared away. Engaged couples, have you given any thought to where you want to hold your nuptials? Well, you can have it here at Sheffield. We have a package that includes our chapel, our dock hall, and our bridal parlor. If you have any questions about pricing or any more information, questions, or concerns, please contact me, Lauren Hill, at our church office. I encourage you as you exit service today to stop by the Native Youth Fine Arts Fundraising Table. We have a plethora of youth here with amazing God-given talents. And if you feel led to bless them, stop by the table, find out some more information, and sign up to help one of our youth. That's all the announcements I have for you today. Now it's time for giving. We have a couple different options on how you can give. You can text 816-266-4848, enter that exact giving amount, and then follow the prompts. You can visit us online at sflc.net, click on that giving tab, and then fill out your information there. If you'd like to mail or walk in your tithe, you can send it to the main campus here at 5700 Winter Road, Kansas City, Missouri, 64127. And if you're in the house today, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. I hope you got a chance to grab a tithe envelope. If you fill out your information and still up, you can drop it in the receptacle right after service. Have an awesome day, Sheffield. Amen. Praise the Lord for everything that's happening here at Sheffield Family Life Center. We want to encourage you, please stop by the Native Youth Table this morning and help support our young people. I know God's doing some great things through our young people and through this youth ministry here at Sheffield under Pastor Jacob Brown. And so I want to encourage you to stop by the Native Youth Table. They're going to the National Fine Arts Competition. And so they need your support. Please be a part of supporting our young people. Amen. How many of you know that our young people are important to us? They're important to the kingdom of God. And we've got to do our part to make sure that they get where they're going in the way of life, spiritual development, and growth. And they're using their gifts and talents. Amen. So we want to be a blessing to them as we support them. Make sure you're aware that uh, there's a place for you and your entire family here at Sheffield Family Life Center on Wednesday nights in ministry. It's, uh, it's available for you and your entire family. Come out on Wednesday nights. It's family night. You know, that's uh, been, been the, the thing that we've been able to uh, encourage the city with. Sheffield never closes. Amen? We're always a house that's open to spread the gospel Get the good news out. And on Wednesday nights, it's family night here. So I can remember uh, as a young person coming to Sheffield when I was younger, man, this place was just hopping. There was people everywhere on Wednesday nights. So and we want to make that available to you and your entire family. Amen. We want to continue in our time of worship this morning. I don't know about you, but I am thankful that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. With our whole hearts this morning. How many of you know that he blesses those who bless him? Amen? God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that's with our whole heart, with our mind, whatever we have that belongs to us, God gives back to us. And I just am uh, so thankful as the Lord reminds us in the scripture that if we honor him with our wealth and with what we have as in the way of substance, he gives back to us. I just want to encourage you, if you've not learned the blessing and given to God, Give to him what is rightfully his. See what he won't do on your behalf this morning. 
Let's go, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today for who you are. We pray that you would bless, Father, whatever gifts we have to offer you in the way of our first fruits, our tithes, our offerings this morning, God. We pray that you will bless both gift and giver. May you use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom, we pray. And let the church shout amen this morning. May the Lord bless you as you give to him. Let's welcome our pastor this morning as he comes. Thank you so much. It's great to see everybody here this morning. Thank you for being in the house on this uh, stormy day. Thank you for watching online. We are privileged to have you with us either way. Let me just uh, just mention for uh, the sake of a little bit of instruction, the, the, the gift of, of speaking in tongues is not always the same thing. Uh, and it's hard to define. That's why most churches don't allow it in services anymore. Even churches that, that believe that and practice that uh, do not allow it to happen spontaneously in service as someone speaking out with a, with a message or some kind of praise. And I think, I think oftentimes um, the fact that it is so hard to define uh, makes it hard to control, hard to understand, and it can become a little awkward. But it's, uh, you know, it, it still has to go through the work of God, uh, especially the gifts of the Spirit, still have to, to go through people. The Word is manifested. They're still manifested through people. So it's not always going to look the same. It's not always going to sound the same. And so earlier in the service, there was perhaps, perhaps a message in tongues uh, that someone who had a, a feeling of, of interpretation, a lot of times, if you've ever moved in that gift, which is uh, a, a risky gift to move in, but if, you've, if you have or, or maybe haven't moved in that gift, um, God usually just gives you a, a couple of words, and you have to just kind of start speaking that, and then it all kind of flows. And, and if you've done that, you understand. If you've not been used in that gift, it's hard to understand. So that might or might not have been a message in tongues where there was an interpretation that wasn't given. Uh, somebody wasn't comfortable. They, they weren't able to, to do it. Um, or it might have just been praise in tongues. And, and either way is okay. So uh, though, though the moment feels a little awkward if it doesn't go as it usually goes, God doesn't have to follow our patterns. Even though Paul... Even though Paul tries to tell us the way it's supposed to go, that's still Paul. So that's not Jesus telling us that. That's not God. That's God through Paul, but it still flowed through him. So there could be some, some things there that you think, because, you know, Paul tells us if you give a message and no one has the interpretation, that the person who gave the message should have the interpretation. But it doesn't always happen that way. And, uh, and just because Paul said that's the way it's supposed to go doesn't mean that God or the Holy Spirit have to abide by even Paul's rules. So just, um, just know that, that it's, it's always a little bit of a mystery. It's always a little bit undefinable. And it can become awkward, especially for the person that was used in the gift to think, oh, did I, did I do something wrong? Oftentimes it's praise. It's praise. And if you've experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and speaking in tongues is part of your, your, your prayer life or your spirit life, um, and it's, it's, you know, it's called a heavenly language, it's usually something that, that no one knows. Sometimes it's an actual language that other people know. And it's, it's a box that has no sides and has no lid. So the Holy Spirit can function uh, in a multitude of ways and does. So just know that... Uh, that it can still be God, even though it feels like this didn't fit the mold. It's okay. It doesn't have to. Uh, we still trust God. Now, we don't want chaos. I will, I'm not going to allow chaos in that, in that arena. Uh, we're going to follow biblical precedents, but sometimes it's not exactly like we would have designed or thought it was. So just, just appreciate the fact that the presence of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit is here and active. Uh, here and in your life. So that's worth appreciating because that's not always the case. And in most churches this morning, that's probably not the case. 
And so the, the Holy Spirit's there, but not allowed to move in a certain way. So I just thought I'd give a little instruction for that. Maybe you're more confused than you were prior, but uh, just, just know that, uh, that God and the Holy Spirit able to move and uses people, and it will always be that way. Fab Five, it's starting a new series today uh, called the Fab Five. When we, when we say Fab Five, if you're a sports fan, you probably automatically think of the Michigan Wolverines uh, and their Fab Five that, uh, that ended up, most of them, almost all of them ended up being amazing ball players and uh, basketball players, and, uh, and they were known for being the Fab Five. That's not what this is about. It has nothing to do with that. This is, uh, I'm going to talk to you with, uh, with five fabulous psalms. I want to present to you five fabulous psalms, five psalms from the book of Psalms. And most of them, if not all of them, will be lesser known, but amazing content. And the first one I want to give you today is Psalm 63. And most people, I'm, I'm going to guess, most people have not even read Psalm 63. It doesn't really get any attention. It's not a prolific psalm. Someone might say, oh, what are your favorite psalms? What are the psalms you've read? I've read 23, I've read 91, I've read 150. I've read, you know, you might go through a list. I've read Psalms 1, some of the more noted psalms. 63 is not one. But it says a lot that I feel like we need to hear today. I believe God gave me this psalm for this day. And I'm just going to walk through it with you. This is not going to be uh, high pressure or, or real intense, but I just want to walk through this psalm with you. Psalm 63, and uh, it should be on the screen as we move through. David, this is a psalm of David. David wrote many or most of the psalms, probably not all of the psalms, but they're attributed to him. David says, God, you are my God. And this would be David talking. This is noted to be a psalm of David. God, you are my God. And it's, it's not, I have to, that statement makes me want to break it down automatically because it's the declaration of God, but not just the God or a God. God, you are my God. See, there's a difference between saying, oh yeah, I believe in God, or I know, you know, I believe in the God, the one true God. There's a huge difference between saying something like that and saying, my God. God is my God. It's like when we went through the 23rd Psalm, and I said, I read it like this, the Lord is my shepherd. I claim him, claim it as mine. David is, is there again. God, you are my God, my personal God. David broke it down and made it personal. It has to be personal. We can't have a generic or general relationship with God. It has to be personal, and it always becomes personal. Because God has to be part of our function. He has to be part of our mind, part of our heart, part of our action. God has to be personal. David said, I search for you. I search for you because it is personal. What do we do when we're searching? We seek with eyes open, calling out. We look, I search for God. I'm searching for God. There are times we do have to search for the direction of God. Search for the voice of God. We feel like we're almost searching for God. I mention him often as illustrations, but I have a five-year-old grandson who, you know, five-year-olds love to play hide-and-seek. And when he was a little younger, especially like three, we would play this often, and you know the drill. He would hide in the same place every time. And then it's, it's my job or whoever's it, I guess would be the word. You have to walk around and find them. And, and we know exactly. I know exactly where he is. He's in that closet with the door not completely shut because he's afraid to shut it all the way while he's in there. So he's in that closet with the door almost shut. But what do I have to do? I have to walk around and go, Jude, has anybody seen Jude? Jude, where are you? Hey, buddy, where are you? Hey, well, he must not be here. So we have to, I have to seek him out, looking for him with eyes open. Where is he? Have you seen Jude? I'm looking for him. Is he back here? Nope, he's not behind the couch. Is he over here? And he can't even fit there, but I'm seeking him out. And that's kind of, in my mind, what David is saying about God. Even though he's my God, sometimes we have to seek him out and find him with open eyes. I mean, there are times 
when I feel like I have to search high and low to find what God is actually saying to me. I have to search scripture. I have to think through worship songs. I have to think through things God has spoken to me. I have to go back through notes I've written and, and things I've kept and say, okay, God, what are you speaking to me? And I have to seek God out and find him. That's what David is saying. You are my God, and I search for you. I search for you. And he goes on in that same verse to say, I need you for my very existence. That's why I search for you, because I have a strong need for you. God, I need you to the point that I'm going to search you out, search your will out, search your direction out. David tells us, I have felt your presence, and I've seen your reality. He's saying, I've seen the power, I've seen the glory, I've experienced it, I know it, and nobody can take it away from me. And I say this often, and I will say it again today, that's one of the great reasons to be in the house of God, because we experience, we can say, I've seen your power I've seen your power. I've seen your reality. I know you are true. I have sensed it. Nobody can take that from me. When I go through doubt, times of doubt, when I go through times of trauma, and the enemy is challenging my mind and everything around me, I've experienced your presence. I've experienced your presence. This week was, was a huge week for our family, biggest week for our family in a long time. Big week for our family. We had big things going on and good things. And on the way to that, on the way to that, we had other things. And, you know, and I just say this because, because your family, and I, and I tell you oftentimes things that are going on. So we had, a, we had a big wedding yesterday. My daughter got married. Good thing. Good thing. So, and if you didn't get invited, I apologize, we didn't make the list. We were strictly told, this is not your wedding. So we tried to slip names in there. It may or may not have happened. I kind of checked out on that part at, when we got to that point. It's like, you're right, it's yours, whoever you want there. And so, um, went through that, leading to that. You know that if you've, got, if you've ever had a daughter get married, you know how that looks. It's, it's a wild week. Well, on Tuesday of this week, my oldest son and his wife, who were in their second trimester of pregnancy, lost their baby. And so that was, that was Tuesday. And so that was hugely traumatic. Their first child, which, you know, they were very excited about, as were we, they lost, they lost the baby. That was very traumatic. That was Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I'm doing something, and my back goes out. And so I started going to the chiropractor, and I'm, and I'm literally praying, God, just make it okay to get through the wedding. I'm not asking for complete healing. Just get me through the wedding so I can stand up and look normal. And it's hurting right now. But I prayed it again. God, just get me through the sermon. I'll worry about the pain after that. And I say all that not for sympathy or anything. But just to tell you, that's, that's the way things go. That's the way the journey goes. And you have those moments where you say, what am I really basing all this on? Because you pray, and, you know, we prayed. When my daughter-in-law went to the hospital with signs of possibly losing the baby, of course, we're praying. I got other people praying. Pray, 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 pray. I prayed, man. I called out their name all day long. Guess what? It didn't go our way. It didn't. We didn't get the answer we wanted. We didn't get the result we wanted. But I know this. I know the presence of God, and I know the person of God. So even when it doesn't go your way, you can say, no. I don't base it on what happens. I base it on who he is. And just because, just because he didn't heal it for us doesn't mean he's not the healer. 
Just because he didn't show up the way we wanted him to doesn't mean he's not existent. And that's what we have to get to. That's what David's saying. It's the presence of God. It's the power of God. It's the very person of God that I need in my life. And I know that, and nobody can take it from me. People can say whatever they want. Oh, well, yeah, you, did you pray? Anything happened? No. Did you get what? No. Did, well, what did you have? Yes, I did. Why? Why not? I don't know. So situations can make us question, but they can't take away the reality of what we know. And I know that I've felt God's presence. And I know that I've been in God's presence. And I know that I've prayed with other people and they were healed. And I know that I've prayed with people and they weren't healed. But God is able, and you have to understand and you have to encounter the presence and reality of God so when you go through the fire, it will not disappear on you. Your faith will not disappear because it's not based on surface level things. It's not based on what we, what we see or don't see. David says, I can't make it without you and your love. I can't make it. I need the love of God in my life. I need the love of God in my life. And he goes on to say, I will let you know this, how much I need you and how much I appreciate you with my praise. And he even says, with lifting of my hands. So that's not, a, that's not an American phenomenon. That's not a Pentecostal church phenomenon. David was saying in the psalm, with lifted hands, I will show you. I will show you how much I appreciate you and how much I love you with lifted hands praising you. That's a, that's a God thing. That's a worship thing. That's a praise thing. And there are often times that I'm in that situation. I don't feel like praising God. I'm not in the mood to praise God. But I'm in the presence of God. So what am I going to do? I'm going to show God I appreciate Him even though it didn't go my way. God, I still appreciate you. And I still praise you even though it didn't seem to happen for me. David says, I meditate on you day and night. My heart and mind are stayed on you. That's a constant biblical truth. My heart and mind are stayed on you. I meditate on you day and night. That doesn't mean you have to be thinking primarily of God all the time. And if you're not, you're just not there. No, David, even in this same passage, says some strange things. And other things creep into his mind. So just, you can be stayed on God. You can have your mind and heart stayed on God. You still have to live in reality. And still have to deal with reality. But that doesn't mean your heart's not in tune with God. My mind and my heart are constantly in tune with you. I'm constantly listening. Constantly open. You help me so much. David's statement. My statement. Probably your statement. God, you help me so much. He says, you keep me and hold me up with your strength. And I hold on tight. I hold on tight. There's, there's um, a loose connection and there's a tight connection. And after I, after I broke my ankle and fractured my other knee and when I was still in the hospital and they were telling me, you know, you're going to have surgery on both. And then they said, no, just one. And then they said none, and then there wasn't certainty about anything. But they still came in my room and made me walk around with my walker, even though I couldn't put weight on one leg and just a little bit of weight on the other leg. So those of you who are workout people, I was basically doing dips with a walker and touching one toe, one set of toes to the ground every other step. And, and when your body's broken down, strength is not your, your strong suit. So doing a dip with a walker, and they made, I had to go upstairs backwards like this and all kinds of different things before they would release me. And I'm just like, I didn't want to do it. It was tough to do it. Mike, it wasn't easy. And I'm thinking, I'm weak right now. I can't even hardly do this. But I want it out of the hospital. 
so I just thought, well, I'm going to hold on to this walker tight. I'm hanging on to this thing, and I'm going to push myself up, and if I break something else in the process, that's just what's going to happen. And so doing that, but, but I'll tell you what, I held on to that walker real, real tight because it was the only safety I had because there were three different people watching me, watching me struggle. And I had to show the three of them that I could do this. Holding on tight means you realize you need some assistance. And, and I don't know how you hold on to God. I hold on to most things loosely. You know, if, if, if it's, a, it's a, a thing, if it's an item, if it's a, a possession, if it's a car, if it's whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. If something happens, it happens. I hold on to that loosely. God gave it to me. It may disappear tomorrow. It's okay. So hold things loosely, but I hold on to God very tight. I hold on to God tight because I know I need His strength to lean on. I do. Because there's going to be something happen this week or next week or next month or three days ago, five days ago, that I'm going to need to be holding on to God tightly. Because I'm going to need to know that He's there. And I'm leaning on His strength. So I encourage you, as David is saying, I hold on. I hold on tight. And you keep me up with your strength. He says, my enemies who wish me harm, let them deal with your judgment, God. See, we love vengeance. We do. My, I will say this because, um, you, know, you know, I'm still not there. I'm still working to get there. Um, I'm at about 87% now of my heart that's actually right in the, you know, just really what, what God wants to make it. I've still got about 13% I'm working through. And in that 13%, my favorite movies are those where somebody gets people back who deserve it. Like The Equalizer and The Equalizer 2. I can watch those movies every other day. Because when Denzel starts fantasizing about what's going to happen to the people around him, I'm just like, oh, dear Jesus, I love this. This is what life is created for right here. And I love it. And I'm just like, yes, I, I, I can't wait for this to happen. Especially when somebody really deserves it. I know it's a character. I know it's not reality. But they've earned it even if it's just a role they're playing. And you might say, that's not very spiritual. It's not. It's in that 13%. But I love, I love those movies. You know, Liam Neeson, he's the same guy in every, every single movie. But guess what? I like that guy because he gets people back who need to be gotten back. And, you know, most of us in life, we want that to happen. We want that to happen. If we see somebody hurt somebody else, oh, we want them punished. If we see something that doesn't fit, we want it punished. You know, when you see injustice and inequity, you want it punished. You want to do it yourself. When somebody does something to a family member or a friend, you want, yeah, you want vengeance. And David was that way. You can read the Psalms and know David was a man of vengeance. He was. But he's saying they need to be dealt with by your judgment, God. Because See, what happens, and we all know this, we've walked through it. When we want vengeance ourselves, and we start living for that by plotting more and hating more, it actually causes us more pain than anybody else. See, hate builds up in us, and most of us have dealt with it at some point in some fashion. Hate, disdain, the wish for revenge and vengeance builds up in us, and that's all we think about. And it begins to break the goodness in our heart down. And it begins to break the hold and the trust we have in God. And it, it ends up hurting us much more than it hurts anybody else. You say, well, you know, they, they had that coming. Well, maybe they did, but you're still going to pay for it in your heart. And David knew that. He'd lived that out more than once. 
And he had enemies who wanted to kill him constantly and wanted to take from him constantly. And he's saying, God, I need to let you deal with them. I need to let them deal with your judgment. So the things that are in your heart today, that you say, you know what? I want to deal with this. I understand. I understand. But try to allow God to be your vengeance. And easier said than done. But keep on casting that care on Him. He says, but in spite of all of that, the fact that I've got enemies, the fact that I've got this, the fact that that's going on, in spite of all that, I will rejoice in you no matter what. And that's where we have to get. No matter what happens in my life, God, I will rejoice in you. Why? Let's go back to verse 1, because you are my God. See, I'm going to rejoice in you because you are my God. If you're watching a child or a grandchild play a sport and they're not very good, they're still your favorite player on the court. They're still your favorite player on the field. And they say, well, I'm, I'm not very good. I didn't even score. I did this. I dropped the ball. I, I, did, I, I struck out every time. You know what? You're still great, and you're still my favorite player. You're still it. You're still the one. We don't have to always succeed. We can rejoice even when things aren't exactly right. You say, yeah, you may not have had the best game, but we're going to keep working on it. And I love watching you play. I love watching you play. It's tough to rejoice in the middle of all kinds of things and all kinds of struggle. It's tough to rejoice. It's tough to rejoice when your side doesn't win. It's tough to rejoice when, when you take the L. It's tough to rejoice when things don't go like you planned or prayed or thought. It's tough to rejoice when what you've been saying, oh, this is going to happen, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, and then it's not okay. It's tough to rejoice when you have a business venture and it fails and you lose everything. It's tough to rejoice when you were once successful and now you have to declare bankruptcy because it didn't go right. It's tough to rejoice when bad things happen to people around you and that's not what you were working toward, pulling for, or moving for. But we have to be able to say, you are my God in spite of you are my God, and I will rejoice in you. And I'm trying to learn this in my life. I'm trying to put in practice more verbally thanking God when things don't go like I want them to go. You know, I've done it off and on randomly. I'm trying to do it more when things don't go well. God, I thank you even though. I thank you even though. When somebody does me wrong, when somebody does me wrong, I actually try my best now, if I can remember, sometimes I forget, I try to pray blessings on those people. Because I want my heart to be right. And I want to be able to receive what God has for me. Because if I'm stuck in this ugly season and I refuse to move forward, I'm never going to get to the next season of blessing. Because I'm convinced from running the race and watching a lot of other people run the race, when you're in a tough season... You will get out of it. If you keep following God and you keep listening to God, you keep your eyes on the prize, you will get out of that season at some point. You might think, I'll never experience God's blessing again. Yes, you will if you hold on tight. You absolutely will. Why? Because you're His. You're His. You might have a bad game. You might have a bad season. But at some point, the L is going to turn into a W. Because God is on your side. You are my God. And I will rejoice in you in spite of. In spite of. Tough to say. Tougher to live. But you can do it by holding on tight. Bottom line is, uh, we all need Jesus. We all need God. We all need a Savior. We absolutely do. We need a Savior in our life because we get ourselves in situations where we just need a Savior, and that's exactly who Jesus is. 
John 3, 17 tells us he came to the world, he was sent to the world, not to judge and condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Because we are the world. We need a Savior. We are. I'm going to ask you this morning, you online, I know there's a, a much larger audience online today with the weather. You're in the building or you're online and you say, you know, I, I need a Savior today. I need a Savior today. I know where I am. And we don't need details of where you are or what you've done or any of that. That's irrelevant because God will save you from fill in the blank. You need a Savior today. And you know that in your heart. I need that relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I need a Savior in my life today. I need that. If you're in the room, I'm going to ask you to stand if that's you, and we're going to pray together. I'm not going to call you forward and make you do anything else, but we need to take a stand. You say, I need a Savior today. I need Jesus to be my Savior today. If you're watching or listening somewhere else, uh, just separate yourself from whatever's around you. Maybe you just need to close your eyes or move to a different part of the room or just separate yourself and in that position where you say, I, I need a Savior today. I need a Savior in my life. I need that. And God is that. He sent His Son into the world to be the Savior. God will be the judge later. But He's the Savior today. Pray this with me if you're standing or you're watching or listening somewhere else. Heavenly Father, I need a Savior today. I need Jesus in my life. I need you to be active and strong. I need to be an overcomer. So I commit myself to you. I choose to be a follower of Jesus today. I ask you to give me the strength I need as I trust in you and lean on you. I'm going to try to hold on tight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stand with me, if you would, all over the auditorium. Let's... uh, Let's, let's dismiss this way today. Let's, let's decree something together. And it's, and it's this. I will rejoice in you in spite of all. Let's say what David said. I will rejoice in you in spite of all. So say that with me. I will rejoice in you in spite of all. Okay, now that we know what we're doing, let's do the real thing. That was a dress rehearsal. I will rejoice in you. That, that was weak, folks. I will rejoice in you in spite of all. Amen. Have a great week. Be blessed. Look forward to seeing you next week.